Hey guys, I originally was just going to make this as an Instagram reel and then I realized that I really don't want to have to condense what I have to say here to fit into that format or chop it up into a bunch of different posts that you guys might not see the whole thing. So here we are. I want to talk with you guys about resilience. So I will talk about my favorite products of 2023 that created more resilience in my skin, my hair, my nails, and just overall. But before we do that, I also really wanted to talk about mental resilience. So if you're just here for the products, there are chapter timestamps in the description box, so you can feel free to skip ahead. But I would really love it if you stick with me just for the message that I have for you guys right now. So this message is something that I want to give to all of you guys who are like me and you're struggling with depression or maybe with ADHD, with anything that messes with your executive function and your ability to just complete tasks, basically. Um, but especially this message is for those of you like me who are struggling with depressive symptoms, but also have a type A personality. So you get that super fun combination of struggling so hard and having the most intense internal battles just to do the most basic things and struggling with that voice inside of you that is mad at you for struggling so hard to do the most basic things. So this is something that I've been thinking about a lot and dealing with pretty intensely in the past couple of weeks and it has really made me think a lot about what resilience is. So if you're with me, please know that it is okay to struggle. It is okay to stumble. It is okay to fall. Resilience doesn't mean that you never have problems. And resilience doesn't mean that you are always able to push yourself past your struggles. Sometimes resilience really just means it's okay to need help. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to let the people that love you help. This is something that I struggle a lot to internalize too. So maybe hearing it from me will help you more. But you, in order to be resilient, the most important thing I've found is to give yourself grace when you need help. And it's to give yourself grace when at the end of the day, you really couldn't. Like, I showed you guys in my Instagram stories, I had a day a couple of days ago where literally the one to do task besides laundry was just, just try to do something like that was the whole task. And just letting myself have that day where I just, just try helped me more than any amount of to do list that I've struggled with over the last few weeks while I'm dealing with some stress from personal things and um, the situational depression that resulted from that. It was just changing my mindset to just do something, anything. It ended up being an Instagram post, but if it had literally just been get some groceries, that would have been okay. Because sometimes you just only have the spoons to do that one thing. And you know what? On top of that, if you have a day where you don't have it in you to even do that one thing, the worst thing you can do for yourself and the worst thing you can do to yourself is to be mad at yourself about it and to spiral more. That's also, I have been doing that. So I'm saying this from experience. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to let that day where you stumbled start defining you and spiraling and getting more mad at yourself and getting more frustrated with yourself. So if you stumble, if you have a day where you could only do one thing, if you had a day where you really, really could not bring yourself to do anything at all, that's okay. To be resilient means that, okay, so the next day, you'll try again. And next day, you'll do one thing. Maybe the next day, you'll do two more things. And then slowly, you can start building yourself back up. Basically, it's the difference between letting your symptoms and your little type A internal voice, like the one that I have. It's the difference between letting them derail you or just delay you. So we go get on a train or we have train tickets, right? There is a big difference between a train being delayed, which happens all the time and is perfectly normal, 
or the train being derailed. So the difference is what determines your resilience. Let these struggles and these times when things are hard for you just be a delay and then get back on track. Don't let them derail you by being mean to yourself, by being overly critical of yourself, by stomping on yourself when you're already down. Because if you have one of those days where it took everything out of you to just get out of bed and brush your teeth, yelling at yourself is not going to help. I know. Been there. Yelling at yourself is not going to help. Give yourself grace. Be gentle with yourself. It might sound counterintuitive, but this will help you be more resilient as you work on getting through your symptoms and you work on getting through your struggles. So that's what I wanted to say to you guys regarding mental resilience. And now we can talk about the products for resilient hair, resilient nails, resilient skin, and just overall resilience. We'll start with nails and work our way in. So I don't actually really like the brand OPI, which you I'm sure have seen everywhere in like drugstores and nail salons and stuff like that. A lot of the products that I've had from them over the years, I really haven't liked, but OPI repair mode is incredible for me. So this is a nail repair treatment and it kind of works on the same principle as Olaplex or Appraise where it repairs and reforms broken protein bonds but this is specifically for the nails. So I use this whenever my nails are bare, like in between nail polishes, or if I'm just leaving my nails unpainted for a while to work on repairing them, in order to repair like the surface, little cracks, little breakage from where, you know, if you have longer natural nails, you know, sometimes they'll bend or they'll get caught on stuff and they start getting weaker because some of the protein bonds got broken and they're starting to leave little weak points that can split and get worse. So what I found is that after using this stuff for a while, shockingly, it does fix those little breakage points. It does help to seal back up little like surface damage on my nails. So a lot of times I would think, oh, the nail got bent back so far, like for sure it's going to break off. But if I was really consistent, about using this twice a day for a few days, a lot of times that weak spot would be strong enough that it would never break off. So I think this is awesome. A bunch of friends have gotten it since I started recommending it and all I hear is really good things about it. So OPI repair mode is my pick for resilience for nails. Speaking of bond repair, Resilient hair is also really important, especially since I've been growing my hair out really long. A lot of that is just from having issues with bringing myself to make an appointment, find a hairstylist and get it cut, but also because I do like it better longer. But I've been growing my hair out longer. I bleached it so that I could color it originally for some sponsored content, and then I just decided I enjoy it. Plus, it's already bleached, so what am I going to do? And I've been heat styling my hair a lot more as it's gotten longer, and I've been growing it out. It's got more volume. It's fuller now and denser than it used to be, so it's just more fun to play with. So we talk about resilience in hair. What I'm talking about is also the strength of the protein bonds in the hair shaft. So when you start damaging your hair, which will happen with bleach or heat styling or even just roughly brushing it or treating it less than gently, as the protein bonds in your hair strands start to weaken and break, your hair loses resilience. So it becomes more prone to stretching, to snapping, to breaking off, all things that we don't really want, right? So what I've been using almost all year for resilience for my hair is the Appraise Bond Repair Treatment. Yeah, you can see the label there. So it just comes in the concentrate, comes in these little vials, and then you just put it in their bottle, mix it with water, and then spray on dry hair. Leave it on for at least 10 minutes, and then shampoo and rinse it out. I do it a couple of times a week. Very similar to the OPI repair mode, I have been super shocked at how well it's worked. I mean, I fry the hell out of my hair when I heat style it. I curl it with a flat iron. Um, I have to use really high heat because it's very typical stubborn, straight Asian hair. And that, of course, like if I do that for a few days and I don't try to fix it, I can feel the damage. You can feel that it starts to stretch more, it starts to snap, it's like breaking off at the ends. 
But using this consistently means that like every time I use it, visibly, I can see that the hair gets stronger as the protein bonds are repaired. It's shinier, it's softer, it's smoother. You can feel the difference when you're brushing it. It just feels stronger. So for resilience for hair, this stuff still. And I do have like basically the whole Olaplex home range now. And I like those as styling products and heat protectants too. But honestly, like the appraise is what I have relied on for the better part of this year. I think I started working with them in January of this year and I've been consistent ever since. And despite all of the heat styling and all of the torture that I put my hair through, my hair is pretty fine for that. So that's good. And now for skin. So when I think of resilience in skin, I'm thinking of two different dimensions. So I'm going to show two different picks for products for skincare. One component of what I think of as resilience in skin is whether it can bounce back and heal pretty quickly from things like breakouts and irritation, allergic reactions, eczema, stuff like that. So this is not a product that is new to me in 2023. I've been using it since 2015. But my ultimate pick for resilience for skin, as far as the ability to heal and bounce back, is, oh my god, it's always going to be the Cosarex Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. This snail essence has gone viral like probably five times in the past few years, especially when it started hitting TikTok. It's so reliable to me. So every time this goes viral, there's always kind of a chorus of people saying it's just hydrating. It would be just as good if you used a glycerin product. Everyone's skin is different. Everyone is looking for different things in skincare. So I'm not going to disagree that that is their perception that it's just a hydrating product. But for me, this always and reliably helps my skin bounce back faster. If I've messed up my barrier, if I've broken out, if I'm having a reaction to anything, always when I'm using this consistently, it's fine within like a day or two. And so that is why this is my pick for resilient skin. Second dimension of resilience for skin is literally like the ability to bounce back. Um, to bounce back from like, oh, you're smashing your face in your sleep and you have little sleep creases or just expression lines and things like that. So this is more age-related resilience. A lot of anti-aging products will talk about resilience as their claim. So for bounce back and for that kind of elasticity and resilience that has to do with age, I am picking the timeline products. I have these because I had done sponsored content of this line. And then I, in the course of making that Instagram reel, I still use them for like a month before I made the reel because I don't want to make a make an ad and promote things that I didn't actually use or like. So there was that. And then I was so into the results that I started asking them to keep sending it, um, which they did. So these are very unusual. The active ingredient is called MitoPure and what it does, and I won't do the whole spiel again, but essentially it helps your mitochondria to function at their best with more energy, which is something that as we get older is um, decreased. So as they allow your mitochondria to function better and to function with more energy, what results is better skin renewal. So. I mentioned this in my stories, um, either this morning or yesterday or something like that. It's hard to describe if you're not old enough to have seen your skin start to lose density and to lose volume, but that is what this brings back. And that density and the volume, literally just the appearance of having more skin cells like per centimeter on your face makes a huge difference to resilience because as our skin loses density, it gets more lax. It doesn't have resilience because it's losing the amount of volume and density that it needs to be able to bounce back from you know, just things like pressure on your skin or sleep creases and things like that. Hopefully I explained it well enough and I do still have the Instagram reel up that goes into more detail about this. But their line has a cream, a day cream, and a serum. 
they all have the same 1% mitopure in them. So I just use whichever one fits in my routine at the time. So like if I want to use a different cream, I don't want to use their day cream or night cream, then I'll use the serum. If I decide that I want to use their day cream or their night cream instead, then I'll skip the serum and just use the cream. I have been using these almost every skincare routine since I started trying these products. And I am surprised it's a Swiss company. So I think it might be the first time that I've chosen a company from that part of the world as one of my best of. But this is definitely my favorite for resilience, as in bounce back and anti-aging for 2023. And finally, one more thing. I have to go back to the hair and nails for this. I cannot really talk about my nails being stronger and my hair growing in with more density and fullness without mentioning that I take the Goalie Women's Multi Gummies. Um, so nutrition is a little bit difficult to talk about. There are a lot of people who say you shouldn't take supplements. You should be able to get all your nutrition from your diet. In theory, yeah, of course, it's better. It's probably more bioavailable um, to get all of your nutrition from what you eat. But as much as we might like that to be true, it's not feasible for a lot of people, whether it's because they have some food intolerances that mean that they have to miss out on like entire categories of food that have nutrition they need. Maybe it's budget. Even if it's not a budget issue, it is still a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of labor to learn in really granular detail what nutrition you need and how you need to change your diet to achieve that just through food. Um, sometimes, for some people, being able to hit your ideal nutrition with food alone is going to conflict with other goals that you have. Like if you have certain macro targets, uh, if you're working on body recomp, fat loss, anything like that, or if you are like vegetarian, vegan, etc., there's a lot of reasons why just get all your nutrition from food isn't necessarily feasible. So I am all about, you know what, if you want to take a multivitamin, as long as you are aware of any interactions that it might have with your medications or with any conditions that you have, if you have any issues and you clear it with your doctor, I think that's awesome. So I take these. I've taken them for a year, year and a half, something like that. And they are a multivitamin, so there's a lot of different vitamins and nutrients in it. But the reason that I'm bringing these up now is because these have pretty inarguably made my nails much stronger and made my hair grow in much more. So like I still trip out when I'm like doing my hair or something like that. And it's sort of hard to tell that I have grown like entire new layers of hair that I didn't realize I could grow because they never have. Like even just the baby hairs here, I was going to shoot like a hair update and I'm just doing it here. But like the baby hairs along my temples and my hairline here, have never gotten this long before. Like they're just hairs, they're not baby hairs and they keep growing in. Um, so I will say that in terms of resilience, I'm going to just shoehorn these in because having good nutrition makes you more resilient overall in terms of health. And I really don't get sick a lot. I got COVID once this year and that was it. Um, but also I just had to bring them up because otherwise it wouldn't be super honest to talk about my hair and my nails. So. Thank you guys for bearing with me through this. I will put links to all the products that I showed in the description box. Ultimately, I mostly just wanted to talk about mental resilience, the message that I had for you guys in the beginning. It's a hard time of year for a lot of people. Um, the holiday season is not the most cheerful or festive for everybody. Plus, on top of that, seasonal depression is very real. Um, so if you have been struggling... And if you have been really frustrated with yourself because you're struggling, I wanted to tell you that I see you. You're not alone. I'm in it with you too. All we can do is be resilient in the sense that we give ourselves grace when we can't get a lot done and we just try again the next day. So thank you for watching. <laughs>